Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions and in today's Two Minute Tuesday, we're gonna be taking a look at the hatch command, including a bunch of issues and common problems with hatching, as well as a few tips and tricks that are gonna save you time in the long run. Before we jump into the new video, I wanna thank today's sponsor, theprepared.org. They're a free weekly newsletter that is all about engineering, manufacturing, infrastructure. I've been subscribed for a while now and it's honestly one of the few emails that I'll stop and read when I see it hit my inbox. Every issue is different in a good way. It's nerdy, useful, and fun. And it covers industry news, including CAD, as well as interesting engineering feats and weird explainers like global marketing, for sand and deep dives on fabrication methods. It's a super interesting newsletter and I think you guys should all go and sign up. I'm gonna put that link up above and down below. Again, it's theprepared.org. Uh, I'm a big fan. Last week's newsletter included a cool breakdown about an engineering project called the Tuck Bike, where the creator walks through some of his design process as well as ideas around building a full-size bike that is collapsible down to a much smaller size. Again, I think you guys are going to get a lot out of it, and I highly suggest subscribing now. So once again, that's theprepared.org, and I want to thank them for sponsoring today's video. Check them out. The link is down below to sign up and up above. Now, let's jump right into today's video. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be taking a look at the hatch command. So for those of you who have not used it much, you can simply type in hatch down at the command line and hit enter to bring it up. Or you can choose this bottom on the home ribbon tab under the draw box called hatch. This is gonna activate the hatch creation ribbon bar. And from here, you've got a few options, but one of the most common issues and problems that you're gonna run into when hatching is not having a closed polygon or boundary to hatch your objects. So you can see this odd shape up here. I'd like to hatch it, so I'm just gonna choose pick points and click inside. Now you can see that it's alerted me with an error calling for a closed boundary that cannot be determined. So what it's doing is it's looking for a closed box to hatch, and since I don't have a fully closed hatched hatchable box, you can see that it's shown me an error here. Um, and by hitting enter, we're gonna just exit that command. So when we select our lines, you can see that they're broken apart. So we've got a gap here, which is pretty minor. And we've got one, it looks like over here, which is pretty small as well. Now on more complicated drawings, say floor plans or site plans, it's gonna be hard to always find these little issues, but the red circles that appear are gonna help you track them down. So you have two options. You can close those. So simply connecting them up and or joining the lines is going to fix that issue most of the time. Now, if you still can't find those broken sections, you can activate the hatch command once again here and go to the options flyout to the right. Now, there's an, a section and an option here called gap tolerance. You can crank this up a bit and it's going to allow for gaps to be filled automatically by the hatch command. Now, you don't wanna turn it up too much, but you're gonna to need to know roughly the scale of your drawing and the size of those gaps. It doesn't hurt to start big, but you could end up hatching further than you would like. I've turned mine up, now let's click on the pick points uh, option again and click inside here, and you can see that it has automatically hatched even though we do still have this gap over here between these two lines. So you can see it's broken, but it's filled that in and hatched the area perfectly. So that's the first issue and how you can fix that. You can either use those red circles and close your polygons or lines, or you can use the gap tolerance option and turn that up a bit to make up for it. Now I wouldn't always leave that turned on because it is nice to know if you have a broken polygon. So I like to get that alert and then adjust it and I'll usually go back to a low or minimal gap tolerance. Now another thing that comes up often with hatching is how do you break apart or separate separate or multiple areas that are part of one hatch. So I'm going to show you that right now. 
we're going to type hatch and we're just going to click here and here and here so you can see that this has all become one hatch we'll uh, change our color oh sorry over here we'll change our color so it's a little bit more visible and you can see we have all of those three areas selected but they're acting as a single hatch so if we hit enter you can see it's hatched all of those areas together but say i want to have each area as a separate color now you could hatch each one individually or you can simply go up to the options fly out here and separate your hatches now this is going to break them up by closed area so each closed area now has its own hatch we can now go and change out those colors pretty quickly and easily here saving you a ton of time uh, with your hatching you can simply go through and click all of your areas that you're interested in and i'm going to show you that again down here so we're going to bring up our hatch command again we're going to pick points and we're just going to go around here and choose a bunch of areas now once again it's going to combine all of these to an individual or a single one individual hatch and hitting that options button separate hatches has now split up each closed area to make it easy for us to change out these colors later or perhaps simply delete one here or there now lastly what do you do if you've lost the boundaries or deleted them by accident from your hatch and you need to make changes or maybe you want to rehatch or adjust the boundaries um, you can bring those back by simply selecting any hatch and you can see here that we don't have any lines along the outside so if i move my hatch all of my polylines are gone but if you select it right click and choose generate boundary it's going to recreate that outer boundary line so that you can make changes and rehatch if necessary so same goes for this one over here i can delete this outer line all i've got is the hatch but by right clicking and generating a boundary it's recreated the line that is used as the outer boundary for our hatch this can be super useful if you need to make changes later on in the process maybe those lines accidentally got deleted or maybe you wanted to you can always bring them back as long as you've got that hatch to generate the boundary from all right so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video again i want to remind you guys to check out the prepared.org it's an awesome newsletter and i've honestly been enjoying it i do read it every time i get a new one in my inbox and i think you guys will too it's interesting it's unique and it's not something we see a lot in the industry so check it out that's the prepared.org and sign up for their newsletter that link is going to be down below in the description and up above right now thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and like the video cheers Thanks for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to check out my last video right here. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe up here to make sure you're up to date and you see all my new videos. Thanks again. Cheers.